Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. So, continuing on with trying to choose a small point-and-shoot camera, the waterproof type. Um, we looked at the AW100 in the last video, and today I want to look at the uh, Lumix Panasonic TS3. I'm trying to decide, I've narrowed it down to three that I'm uh, very interested in, and I'm going to buy one of them between the AW100 Nikon, the Panny TS3, that's Panasonic TS3, and the Sony TX10. So, we've gone over the features of the AW100 that are of interest to me. The TS3, highly interested, uh, interesting camera as well. Uh, it's won some great awards um, until this point, uh, and that remains to be seen if it keeps the throne or not, but it seems to be king of the, the rugged outdoor waterproof, shockproof type cameras. Um, they call it quad protection. Waterproof, dustproof, freezeproof, shockproof, 40 feet waterproof, 6.6 .6 feet uh, shockproof, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, freezeproof, and dustproof. So really rugged little camera. Full HD movies uh, at 1080i. So um, same there as the AW100 was at 1080i. 720p. Um, if you want the, uh, the P, you go down to 720. Um, so that's about the best you're going to see in these little compact point and shoots that are the uh, tough outdoor type cameras. Uh, it has GPS function, compass, altimeter, barometric sensor for outdoor. So that's pretty cool. Um, one of the things that's uh, less uh, than, or a con I guess you could say to the AW100 Nikon is that this has a four times zoom or a 4.6 I guess technically. Um, it's a 28 to 128 millimeter in 35 millimeter terms, whereas the Nikon has the five times, which is 28 to 140. So you get a little more reach with the Nikon. Um, not, a, not a great deal more, certainly not um, a big reason to rule out the camera, but just something to take note of. Uh, it is optically stabilized, same as the Nikon has the VR. Um, it uses a, a Leica uh, Vario zoom lens so it should be a good quality lens panasonic typically has good quality lenses in their point and shoots uh 30 centimeters it looks like here from it doesn't read too clearly but it looks like the macro is um 30 centimeters on the tele end and five centimeters on the wide end so it looks like we can get a little closer from macro on the nikon aw100 so that'd be a point in the aw100's favor uh as far as movie recording, we've got the AV CHD uh, codec, so we're basically looking, and I think that's a light version from what I see here. So you can do, as I said, the 1920 HD, the 1920 by 1080 at 60i, or you can do the 1280 by um, 720 at 60p if you want the 60p, and um, it has an ISO range of 1600 to 6400. So it's stating that it can go 64, which is higher than the Nikon. And the TS3 has a 12 megapixel sensor versus the Nikon 16. Uh, this may actually be an advantage with the TS3 and why they're claiming a higher usable ISO because with less um, megapixels on the same size sensor, perhaps it's a cleaner sensor. Remains to be seen. On paper, that's what it would seem to read. Um, and my choice would be in these size sensors to stay lower on the megapixels. So that's, that's an advantage to the TS3 there. Although 64 mega 100, 6400 ISO is not something you want to shoot at in a camera this size. Probably not even usable in black and white in optimum lighting. Uh, 3200 probably isn't either. You want to stay 800 or below. Ideally 400 would probably be your ceiling. Um, so um, good looking little camera. Again, the, um, the the monitor is actually lower resolution even than the AW100. When I said it wasn't class leading at 460K, this has a 230K monitor, so uh, half of the Nikons. So Nikon is beating the TS3 on the monitor for sure, but then I believe the Sony's at 9-something. So they all have different monitors there. Standard HDMI output, lithium-ion battery, so... Um, Nice looking little camera all in all, almost identical to the AW100, so it almost seems that Nikon's kind of copied it. They even have the same orange color. Um, the big plus with this TS3 is that it's been out for a while. It's won some awards. We know it's a decent little camera and um, certainly a good runner against the AW100. So um, going to be interesting to see um, 
it looks like the aw100 on paper has a few things going for it over the ts3 the monitor the little bit longer zoom lens um, and i do like the screw in lock for the uh the card and the battery better than the ts3s so in any case still excellent looking little camera something to consider the price is about the same these are about 379 right now msrp here in canada so if you're which is the same as the nikon at the moment so if you're looking for something definitely consider the ts3 uh, we're going to look next at the sony tx10 and uh, so far these are, are are pretty much on par the ts3 and the aw100 but i'm giving the nod to the aw100 in those in those few categories there and um, it'll be interesting to see where the sony comes in after we look at the specs and then I'm going to get a hold of the one that I choose out of three of these. Ideally, I'd like to get a hold of all three of them. We'll see if we can do that. And um, then we'll give you a rev uh, hands-on review um, when we get that. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon with some new video posts, some new articles. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on in the world of photography here at artoftheimage.com. Uh, and once again, if you haven't checked out, uh, if you have kids, my kids' ebooks are available at pumpernickelpark.com. They're great value at 99 cents each. Chloe the Dancing Cow has hit number 10 on the Amazon bestsellers list for the, its category of children's ebooks. Thanks, folks, for your support there. And if you have tweens or teens or know anybody that does, uh, if they like the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series or if they have trouble getting them reading, check out diaryofthenerdking.com. That's at nerdkingdiary.com. And uh, thanks again, folks. We'll talk to you soon.